the top part. So the whole dress, you can see it's a very fitted bodice and a very big skirt. It's got 20 meters of fabric, but I'm going to concentrate um, on the top part because it's got some very interesting pattern cutting methods going on. So let's start, start um, drawing it out and do ask any questions and I will try to answer them. Galana's top and I think it's an American designer. Um, I got this top from Kim sent it to me so if you ever see anything nice do feel free to send it to me and I, I will if I have time look at it and of course if you're my patron you get to vote and suggest things so Kim is actually a patron um, of mine so let's start drawing it out so um, if you have a moulage block or a very fitted block rather than a basic bodice block that's the block to use if you ha only have a basic bodice block um, you need to first of all get rid of the excess ease around the um, torso but actually I'm gonna look at it quickly can you see what's really fascinating it's one the whole front is one there's you got the you got the little gathers around your yoke but then you actually haven't got any more darting so they actually any shaping we've done and um, they've converted into these pleats so it, it'd be a really nice 3d um, bust line and then a really tightly shaped waist and um, so it probably the fabric would be interlined in something else to make it sort of um, give it that um, stiffness so it holds you up like the shape there of its time so let's I'm gonna draw it out and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the pattern cutting behind it so it's what I loved about it is the this typical sort of 90 late 40s 50s neckline that actually goes above your I'm going to get my blocks out this neck point is probably here so on your center front the neck point is here or maybe even a little bit bigger and then it sort of rises up you can see it on the back oh it's a really bad photo but you can see it, it sort of goes above your shoulder point maybe even or on your shoulder point and then at the back it actually goes into a really v, nice v-neck but it's it's sort of again it sort of curves up um, it's a very elegant style but let's start we're going to start by drawing our center front because we actually got a center front seam and this v sort of 50 star um 40s 50 style and um, they always put shaping into the center front and i'm actually going to um, on saturday i've got a book review on youtube and one of the things i'm going to talk about is how vintage books um sort of create this sort of excess shaping you need to create a really tight fit so we've got our center front it's got a normal side seam you can actually see it there and then it's got this beautiful 40s neckline or 50s as discussed i think this might be late um 40s if you want to draft it find out more about it it's called mccall's and it's the pattern number is 4046. Um, and it's McCall's Galanas. And is that the original number? Yeah, it is the original number. Sometimes you get these reprints. Um, so yeah, you can find out more information um, about the designer and whatever patterns and what year it is exactly. So it rises up, it hits just, he can actually, it either hits just here, but I think it might even go slightly below. What do you think? And um, if you look at the back, ooh, if you look at the back, I think it's got there, it goes slightly past the original shoulder point maybe. What do you think? 
I think that's a little bit lower than our satin sleeve. I think it might be like that. I would actually draw it on on myself to get that perfect fit. Because if you make it too low, you won't be able to move. Um, but if you make it too high, you sort of lose that beautiful line you have. And Natalie agrees, but it's a um, slightly dropped shoulder. And if Natalie does, then I pretty sure it's true if you don't na know natalie she does really beautiful she's a costume designer um so check her out natalie i'm gonna check out your whole natalie c sews oh god that's a hard one for me to say um so yeah you've got a slightly dropped shoulder so you probably would your shoulder seam i'm i might slightly curve it but actually no we haven't got a shoulder seam so every so i can't be curved <laughs> But we got that dart, so we're gonna see what that dart does, um, how you can use that to shape. And then from there, it goes in. And I'm gonna go back to the pattern envelope. And this is where pattern envelope is a fantastic um, help. So this, you know, like with contemporary fashion, you can go on net a or go on the website and you can see close-ups and descriptions and back view and front view with old clothes you normally can't so that's our net a here and what I wanted to see is the angle because there I think it's a little bit less than a 50 de a 90 degree angle yeah it's sort of maybe an 80 degree but it's pretty close and the reason I wanted to check it because on the actual image can you see it looks like it's really pointy which would be quite tricky to stitch if any of you have ever stitched triangles you sort of if you make them too pointy you're gonna run out of um you're gonna start running into the bias and um well this is sort of if it's 90 degrees we find whether it's on the bias or on the straight of grain depending on the back but if you have like a really pointy angle it might stretch and contour so um if you imagine stitching something like that if you aren't careful it's really easy to stitch to stretch it and end up with something like that so it's sort of always i like to avoid very narrow angles and hello mary kuchu and hello astrid has just joined us as well um, and yes, Natalie, your name is quite awful. And if you, not awful, but um, if you know me for a while, you know I can't say the word, I've struggled with the word to sew, which is not very good in my um, field. <laughs> because that's why I say stitch quite a lot, because if I don't concentrate, I say it wrong. Um, but going back to this, um, the yoke, you can see that's your bust point. So I think it's actually a really low yoke. So this probably would sit on the natural waist because it's so tightly fitted and we got that super full skirt. Um, so I would probably, if that was my bust point here, then of course my yoke needs to go above it and then down. So it's sort of, I would actually draw on that, that line is really important for making it flattering, getting the dimension right, um, everything. And it needs to sort of, if um, I'm gonna draw my block here quickly. And I've just seen um, Janet joined us. So hi, Jen. And I love that you're saying um, Natalie C. Sells in your head now. So that's your bodice block. And I've drawn in my actual bust shape. then what you really want to do is that yoke sort of needs to if you make it too close to that bust shape your your lovely pleats will be too mean because the, the closer you make it to the bust shape the less volume you're moving into it so you might end up with a tiny pleat and um, if you make it too high then they become really big so it's about getting that proportion right so i think the yoke i'm gonna double check my thinking again so if i look at the pattern piece oh it's really interesting to see the 
this is our pointy bit of the yoke. Oh, okay. Sorry, it's just it's not they it haven't drawn it pointy because of the seam allowance. Um but this line looks on the pattern piece. So on the pattern piece you can see that is your center back, that's your neckline, that is your center front seam. And then can you see the yoke, which looks straight, is actually slightly shaped. Um, so our shoulder line is like here, that's the sh um, your basically that's your yoke at the front, then it becomes your armhole at the back and then you got your side seam so it's actually slightly curved which I wanted to check because um, on here that line looks like it you would want to draw it straight but if you actually look at the pattern envelope and again it's a really good visual aid then you can actually check that it's curved so the shape actually goes something like I think it goes like this but that sort of curve in the pattern, when you wear it, you probably want it to look completely straight. Um, so they actually really gone with what's flattering for you. So um, you probably end up having it, I think it's something like this. So it sort of slightly curves in and out a bit and that's literally to sort of get the best that it probably when you wear it I'm going to draw this a different colour when you wear it it probably looks completely straight but it's actually a slight curve to accentuate um, sorry to accommodate how it goes around your bust which is definitely not straight so it sort of has to sort of skirt around the area and that sort of angle so I would actually use a pen and draw it on your 12 um, and that will actually, I mean, actually put a flat out and see exactly um, how it looks like and Jen is just saying is this like a variation of a princess seam I would construct this like the yoke top so you um, use the shaping as gathers here so all your waist shaping and bust shaping gets converted into um, gathers and then you have that separate yoke piece but it's got a slightly dropped shoulder and then can you see what, what is really was a really nice detail is that um, dart here and that dart the reason why we've got that dart is because the back which I'm going to try to zoom in it's a really bad photo so that's our front the back which has I think um, lots of tiny buttons so I would put a slip in because <laughs> you need a very patient person to do them all up for you but of course buttons look much more beautiful especially if it was a wedding dress So the back looks like this and then you can see on the back again it's got our what we would sort of call our normal shoulder darts but then there's actually no side seam so the back piece extends and then becomes your center front and your yoke so that's your center front here so that air becomes this line and this is that line um, and therefore if you put your if you put our shoulders together on here oh and I can see Imke has just joined from Hamburg hello oh and Navarro has just said there is a fold at the shoulder I think that's actually not a fold I think that's a dart personally but of course you could do it as a fold as well I think it's used as um, for shaping. Um, so it basically because we're eliminating that seam, 
and we got the we got the shaping here so what they have done is actually um probably done something where they pivoted around a bit and then they created a corresponding dart so this is sort of something where what you might end up doing is actually um you might start this just having so your back is like that and then it extends down into the front and becomes your triangle at the center front so you might start with that and then put it on and then actually pinch out exactly how you need to do it so you might actually have to cut into it and see um whether you need that shaping because you might not need that shaping it sort of depends but i think it will give you a nice lift so it sort of lifts the whole thing up and pinches it in uh, but, and it also creates some sort of tension at the front here and so at the back actually it works as your pure beautiful shaping um which is of course our classic shoulder dart which we need because of the shape of our backs um And then at the front, it also creates a little bit of a tension. So it's sort of here. Can you see how it doesn't lay completely flat? It sort of moves it up a bit. Um, but of course, you can you can decide how you do it. I would I would start by probably just using it completely flat and not stitching. So you just literally just ignore your shoulder dart to begin with. You you draw it on your um, pattern and on your fabric um, and you just draw your one piece yoke and then I would actually on the bodice exactly decide where you're gonna get that volume where it needs to be pinched out basically to create it because it might be that we get it from here because it's our pivot point will be somewhere like this so it might actually be that you create a slash line here um, and a slash line here and then you sort of close this angle and when you pivot it into there so it's sort of where you have to work out how you do it um, and of course you might also have to actually overlap as a tiny bit so it's sort of this is where you have the limitation you you can guess as much um, oh, and actually Pink Veil is saying something really um, interesting. She said the front like this also seems to be unbiased. So it would have some extra gift. You're quite right. Actually, this is what I wanted to look at ne next. Because at the beginning, I talked about how if you have a pointy bit like that, if it's unbiased, it gets really stretchy. Um, so I wanted to actually check what the strength of grain is on here. So you can see on here, um, the back bodice is probably on the straight of gra um, grain because we got hundreds of little buttons. So I'm going to use my red pen for that. So we know our, our back bodice is on the straight of grain. And then you can actually see, because this is fixed, the front yoke is for extension. You actually can see the front... Oh, and you can literally do that on patterns. It's nearly so the center front, your right pink um well, this is the basically the complete bias. Um or slightly off. So um it looks something like that. Slightly off, it's not pure straight um, bias. But I want to draw it as a pure bias, but um the straight of grain basically runs parallel to your neckline and also to the edge of the yoke. Um, so what the, what the way I would construct it is, I would draw in my front. Okay, now I'm gonna make it really complicated. I'm gonna show you the, the easier way. If you like flat pattern cutting and find that um, more straightforward, I would literally draw in your yoke shape and then convert your shaping plus extra shaping to get rid of your ease around the waist to make it really super fitted into gathers. And you can use my um, the yoke top tutorial from the Vintage Masterclass for that. And then 
um, you just eliminate um, your shoulder seam but rather than having a yoke at the back you, basically the whole back extends into the front yoke um, which is where you then need to do the extra shaping at the shoulder um, alternatively if you're really obsessed with getting all the straight of grain you can actually sort of work out by knowing this is your straight of grain so this needs to be on bias so you can actually sort of really draw in all the lines um, that they follow the straight um, of grain in the fabric and maybe even drape it or draw it onto your um, bodice onto your 12 but the basic drafting method is basically a yoke top just a lot more advanced which I which I love about pattern cutting is that you learn a beginner friendly method like a yoke top and then you really can do very sophisticated styles like this so let's just finish off um so with all our straight of grains so we got the straight of grain running from our back bodies and then it continues and it hits our center front at nearly a 45 degree so nearly a true bias and then the front actually doesn't say oh yeah it does say how the straight of grain is because i need to learn to read the pattern um, pattern envelope because i've never i've done maybe one or two patterns so you will all know a lot more than me so again the bodice itself is on the straight of grain so the actual drafting is pretty straightforward the interesting bits is going to be where you do sort of slightly bits of fitting to get the shoulder shape um, right to get that beautiful collar which in the neck extended neckline which again is quite easy to draft and um, but you need to get the angles to suit you and that slightly dropped shoulder and let's quickly finish off by talking about um facings if there's no more questions natalie just says it sounds like good process in a flat pattern i'm glad you agree um and which is of course why we all love pattern cutting i think because you learn the sort of foundational knowledge and methods and then you just run with it and you can design anything so let's quickly talk about facings and finishing and construction to finish off so the skirt is 20 meters or 20 yards which is less than 20 meters i know um of organza which is sort of all pleated and darted in so i think the body of that time would have been really well constructed i'm quickly going to see what it says um so actually, oh, there you go. This is fantastic. It uses a horse hair um, braid for the yoke, um, which I think is the it's one. And it's it's a five centimeter, so two and a half inch horse hair braid for the yoke. So that's like a reinforcing tape, and you need one and a quarter um, yards. So I think they've probably um, done all the edges in horsehair tape if any of you have instructions that'd be really interesting oh and they're actually using a zipper as well not buttons okay i'm just looking what else it says it just says bias fold um tape so i the way i would do it is they they don't seem to even line it there seem to be unlined but I would probably do the um I would completely line the yoke in something so you can re use reinforcement like horsehair um tape and stuff like that and bias binding um but I would probably um literally cut the whole back and yoke again in a, either in a in cell fabric if it's a really um fine fabric or otherwise you can have a um facing like that and then you can line this part if you want to or and then you just have to make sure you have the sort of edge you fold over again the facing here i have a separate facing which goes like that and i by the way i've drawn it like this but of course it can be more like that as well 
up to you and then the bodice itself is on the straight of brain at the front so you can have it single or again you probably line it um i think either in like a maybe a really fine cotton would actually be quite comfortable rather than a silk um but whatever works for you um and jenna is just saying the diagram doesn't look that structured to me what type of horsehair braid would that be yeah it's it's tricky to see this a diagram um horsehair braid can somebody correct me if i get it wrong i think it's an origin i think nowadays you can get synthetic ones but it's quite a um stiff um type of tape so it's sort of not thick um it's quite um flat but it's got a sort of a nice structure to support it basically so if you're using um if you want all these lines to not collapse you use as like a horsehair tape so it's the opposite of a bias binding um it's sort of quite stiff but very very light am i right in thinking that and you probably have a look at well nowadays you probably find it online somewhere but it would have been in tailoring supplies so if anybody has a good source do send me a dm otherwise i hope you all enjoyed um this tutorial and natalie says it's like a nylon braid yes so it's i'm sure nowadays you, it's probably be very hard to get proper horsehair um but yes so this is my analysis of the galanos which I'm probably saying completely wrong, Galanus um, evening dress for Macal's. Um, it's pattern number 4046 if you want to check that out online. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you sort of, um, it made sense how you can use um, beginner friendly pattern cutting methods like the yoke top to then, as you learn, create really sophisticated styles like that and i'm now i think i need to get married again just so i can wear this dress or have a big party to go to um just so i can buy 20 meters of a Genza and find somewhere to wear it out but i'm glad you um enjoyed it natalie and thank you so much everybody for joining me i'll be back on saturday on youtube with um five fitting tips from vintage pattern cutting books i like and hopefully you will too and then i'll be back on here hopefully next week and i sh might share some books because um seven of you voted for books but i think 12 voted for the top which is why the analysis um but thank you for joining me i'm glad you enjoyed it um jen and um, thank you for joining me pink veil and about the note about the straight of grain as well and are you very welcome for the australia friendly time and um, natalie bye imke and thank you for joining me as well astrid in your busy work, work day and yes you would have to wear lots of um lots and lots of petticoats and jen this saturday on youtube is recorded but i will hopefully be live on youtube soon again um but this week is a planned one um, so slightly less rambling and more information for all of you. But thank you so much for everybody who joined me. Eva, good night if you're in Australia or India. Um, good morning if you're in the US. And enjoy the rest of your day if you're in Europe or okay. Bye bye everybody.